And Bastille's Dan Smith and Charlie Barnes are with me in the studio. Welcome to Front Row with all your equipment ready to go. Thank you so much for having us. It's so exciting to be here. Oh, well, I'm just thrilled you could be here, Dan. Um, we could hear even just that little extract, the sci-fi references. There's Orwell, there's Huxley elsewhere on the album, there's Philip K. Dick. You know your science fiction. Is it a dystopian vision you have? Because the songs sound really upbeat, even if the lyrics are sometimes quite dark. I think in, in, our, in, our, in our albums and in our songs, we always try to... I guess do the Trojan horse thing in pop music where you, I guess, present melodies in production that potentially sounds quite uplifting and makes you maybe want to dance. But uh, we just like to kind of talk about topics that are interesting to us. And, and this album for me was, was all about escapism in its various forms. Uh, it started with the idea of maladaptive daydreaming, which was something that I heard in, a, in an Edinburgh show, but it became much more about the things that we do collectively or individually to kind of to escape from our lives and from our own minds and you know be that reading or watching films or playing video games or plugging into sort of VR or whatever or just being on the internet and being on our phones or in a kind of I guess more cerebral way like day daydreaming or, or you know dreaming at night so well, can I just pick you, you talked about maladapted daydreaming what yeah. was that idea so I, I went to Edinburgh a few years ago back when it was a thing um and uh, it will be again it will be again and obviously still is sorry um and uh saw a show um that was a really really funny show but but it was about um this particular comedian's kind of reaction to a childhood trauma and um he had a thing called maladaptive daydreaming which allowed him to sort of exist for hours and hours of the day sort of seven plus hours living an alternate life in his mind as a kind of active daydreaming process basically as a captain of a pirate ship and for me i thought what an amazing i mean what an amazing thing that the human mind would do you know i'm sure very complicated in a lot of ways but just our capacity to to, to sort of try and react to trauma or you know or, or or boredom or like whatever it may be is is just so amazing be that in our own minds or the ways you know, the technologies that we develop, all of those things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that kind of inspired the initial thread of the album. Well, there, there is a whole thread running through the album. This fictional big tech company um, invents VR for dreams, doesn't it? Can you talk me through the kind of the vision of it? Yeah, so, so that actually came after the album. So the album kind of deals with a journey, you know, forward and back, back in time uh, through through technology and through the, the, all these different ways of escape. But in when we release an album through the kind of videos and how we release stuff online and our artwork and, and, our, and our live shows, we like to kind of world build as much as possible. I think I'm like a frustrated wannabe film director. So we, we uh, yeah, we invented this fake tech company very originally called Future Inc. Uh, that, Inc that has this tech called Futurescape where you can go into the inner verse within your mind and sort of do anything and, and, and be anyone and, and go anywhere. Um, ironically, a few months later, the metaverse became a, you know, became a thing publicly via a, another big tech, tech company. But um, yeah, I guess it's just a nice way to sort of build the world of the album, present things in a way that don't rely on us as people um, and you know, allow us to sort of, I don't know, I guess make more bad jokes. At the, uh, at the expense of big tech companies and society. And uh, yeah, I, we always try and, when we release an album, go as kind of in-depth as possible. You know, for some people, they'll just be songs they might hear on the radio or, or never hear at all. But, um, you know, for those that care and want to look, we, we like to have fun with the with the weird worlds we build around, yeah. around our albums. There's a really beautiful poem on one of the tracks, Promises, um, by the actor and rap artist Riz Ahmed, which references climate change and social justice. And as you say, very much takes you, you know, into somewhere kind of deep and thoughtful, even if it's kind of beautifully set to music. There's obviously a connection with the subject matter. I wonder how you came to collaborate with him. Yeah, I mean, you, you asked if this was a dystopia. I guess we set out to make a science fiction and ended up writing an album about the present day because it you know often feels like a science fiction and it feels you know through some eyes like it's like a dystopia but with Riz um yeah we're, we're huge fans of his you know obviously he's incredibly thoughtful and articulate and both as an actor and a rapper you know kind of chooses what he does very carefully and we sent him we sent him a bunch of the songs from the album as as fans and it was important to me that on this record because these topics are kind of so big and and sprawling and complicated that it wasn't just my voice and me as a writer on the album, I it was very keen. I was very keen to have someone, you know, with a different perspective of who's led a very different life, you know, uh, basically lending his brain to the album. And there's a track on uh, the Frank Ocean album, Blonde, where Andre 3000 just takes over for an entire track. And I absolutely loved that moment. So we chatted, Riz and I, about, about that idea. And I, I played him a bunch of the songs. I think he liked the fact that we were making pop music, but, you know, that explores strange and slightly complicated topics and not just heartbreak uh so he was you know he was really up for it and, and he digested the album and kind of like 
I guess reflected it back at us through his mind, which was exactly what we wanted. And we said it, we wanted it to be this sort of small, intimate moment in the record. And I could not be more happy with what came back. It's so beautiful, his poem. And uh, yeah, I was uh, really, it's like definitely my favourite part of the album. No, well, it works in the whole kind of flow of it. Um, I'm going to say, let's have a listen to your new single. I know you need to make your way over to the keyboard, yeah. um, Dan. And this is called Shut Off the Lights. And I'm just wondering, if we talk through, we've got... Charlie on guitar. Um, hello. hello. You've got quite a lot of equipment there set up for yes. all your options. How different is this to when you when you do a kind of full on live gig? And obviously in the studio you have a lot of options, don't you, with them? Yeah, this is it's it's pretty different. Charlie and I are about to set off on a little tour, just the two of us, which couldn't be further from the kind of big five piece arena set up with you know singers and brass players and lots of kind of visuals and stuff. So yeah, it's it's um it's pretty different, very stripped back, but um yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I hope I hope people like it. Yeah. Um, all right. This is shut off the lights, yeah. <laughs> in my head again time traveling running out running away with darkness my only friend don't want to do this all again you pull me back down to earth close off your hands are up hands are on me grace landing onto your bed there you are in my head there's a beat it's the beat that you make when you're moving your body prove that i can't escape i can't escape Got my heart in your hands and your hands on my chest In my chest there's a breath, it's the breath that you take away And you said, shut off the lights, we don't need them to dance Oh, oh you said just shut off the lights, we don't need them to dance Oh, 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 oh. you said just shut off the lights, shut off the lights we're drunk, we're invincible No going quietly into the night This room is our universe You are my gravity tonight No talk of the future now Dark thoughts, you're shaking them, taking them out This rhythm that we create sets me straight In my head there's a beat, it's the beat that you make When you're moving your body, you prove that I can't escape I can't escape Got my heart in your hands, in your hands, on my chest, in my chest There's a breath, it's the breath that you take away And you said, shut off the lights, we don't need them to dance Oh, 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 oh. you said just Shut off the lights, we don't need them to dance Oh, 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 oh. you said just Shut off the lights, shut off the lights Last night you said empty your head be here with me Shut off the lights we don't need them to dance Tune out the noise for a moment You said let's just shut off the lights we don't need them to dance Oh 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 oh, oh. You said just shut off the lights we don't need them to dance oh. Oh, oh, no, we don't, 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 no, we don't. Shut up the lights. Oh, 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 shut off the lights. We don't need them to dance. Last night you said, Daisy, your head be here with me. Shut off the lights. We don't need them to dance. Tune out. The noise for a moment. moment. You said, let's just shut off the lights. We don't need them to dance. Hey. <laughs> I feel like there's two or three of us in the in the audience. That was just amazing. Come and come back and sit down. Thank the you. vocals, the combination of kind of acoustic sound with the electronic sound is is so interesting. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the early days of kind of future focus pop would be very synth heavy. It yeah. wanted to sound like machinery. Yeah. Um, I wonder how would you describe um, the way that you you kind of combine you know the physical world of music with the virtual reality idea that you have yeah i mean i've i've always written um 
uh, my process of writing is sort of ideas come into my head and I, I sing them into my phone and then assimilate them on a laptop. So it's always been quite, uh, it's been a, a real mix of both. And, you know, as a live band, we've always put out our music online, obviously, but also toured kind of from the ground up. Um, so I guess it's been a real, a real com combination of both. But in, in the studio with this album, we wanted to explore those kind of retro synths, a lot of kind of plugins, a lot of vocal treatment as well. So there's a thing called Harmony Engine that splits your voice via a keyboard into a bunch of different versions of your own voice in a kind of robotic way. So it's uh, which obviously is nothing new, but is, is a is is a very specific sound. I guess we were exploring with, with the themes of the record, how technology has completely you know seeped into every corner of our lives and and affects us and so it was kind of a kind of obvious thing to shoot for to to take really human elements you know and and mess with them in an electronic way in the same way that there are you know big soaring real string arrangements and brass moments and and you know piano solos but there's also really heavy synths and and a lot of program drums that go along with it so uh yeah it's, it's kind of i've been calling this album like our science fiction film and and it's it's sort of allowed us to yeah, I, I guess musically sort of go anywhere and everywhere, which yeah. has been really fun. Well, there's two things I want to pick you up on. I'll talk about science fiction films in a minute. But just, you know, you obviously know your musical heritage and have this confidence about experimenting with what technology is available now. I wondered what was the music that influenced you growing up? That's a good question. I, I Oh, gosh. I mean, I, my parents are from South Africa and we used to listen to, I mean... Just so much, so much music in the house. But I guess, I guess the music's maybe from when they were growing up. So it was things like like Paul Simon, Graceland is like a, is a, is a, is a big influence, and a lot of Simon and Garfunkel, and you know the Beach Boys and Elton John and stuff. But also, you know, I listened to a lot of like indie music, a lot of guitar music. There was a lot of hip hop in the house because my sister was hugely into hip hop. So the first album that I owned was uh, the Score by the Fugees, which is just a, such an incredible record, and the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. So really all over the place. Um, in, in a great way, and that's really informed Bastille. I, I was really drawn when I was growing up to kind of singer-songwriters with, with, with unconventional voices, people like Regina Spector, who, who wrote quite kind of like weird narrative pop music, and Anthony the Johnsons, sort of now Anoni, um, who would write kind of quite raw, exposed, honest songs um and uh Sufjan Stevens as well um and your vo I noticed your vocalizing even just that number you did you do some unusual stuff with it yeah I think I, I don't have vibrato in my voice so I have to shake my head quite <laughs> a lot like physically shake my head when I want to uh, get that sound but yeah I um yeah I, I, I guess our music is it's kind of a weird a weird big mix of, of all of those influences and more yeah now the visual side uh, you made clear is really important I know you've directed one of the, the kind of music films for um, the album as well yeah. and the album is peppered with film references you know Back to the Future we already mentioned this Thelma and Louise this Total Recall have films always been central to your songwriting massively yeah I, I growing up never really envisaged being in a band and music for me was always a kind of private thing I did for myself um, I really wanted to be a film journalist growing up I went to university and did English and got onto a kind of master's in journalism, which I was going to do, but the band sort of got in the way. So I was, growing up, I was way more a film nerd than I was a musician, um, which is why it's been such a kind of strange and surreal path into being the lead singer of a band and then, you know, going up through bigger venues. And oh, then so you, you, somebody talked you into entering a talent contest at university. Someone actually entered for, entered for me, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, the, the, one of my friends um, put one of my songs into this into this into this competition that Lee's Council ran that was an amazing, amazing resource for kind of upcoming musicians of, of all different genres. And yeah, that basically winning that kind of forced me to play my first gig, um, which was uh, at the time felt quite traumatic. But um, I, 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 I get how weird it is that I'm in a band and, and very kind of reluctant to get on stage. But it's really just an amazing outlet to, you know, to, to, to play the songs that we've made. Um, so, but there's yeah. something journalistic in the way that you you know, you have an investigative reporter's eye for influences and sources and you obviously soak it all up and then create your own work. Um, you've mentioned um, touring a bit and, you know, your, your success really was built on doing a lot of touring in the early years. Um, there is a proper tour for this album to come, but it is also independent venue week um, this week. And yeah. we all know, we've talked on Front Row about how tough the pandemic's been for them. I wonder how far they are getting back to normal. And indeed, I think you've got some stuff coming up at independent venues, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we started we start a small tour, Charlie and I, and, and the rest of the guys coming out to visit um, 
from Saturday with it's it's a, a sort of collaboration with with local record stores and and small independent venues. So we'll be playing a bunch of shows, sometimes kind of two a day, at different towns all up and down the UK, which I'm really excited about. It's going to be a really different show with lots of loops and, and live sampling and things like that. But um, yeah, it's I, you know we 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 wouldn't exist if it wasn't for small venues and and, and independent venues. You know we we cut our teeth. Me as a as someone that, as you can hear, is an anxious wreck. I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for the opportunities to play on those stages and play on those bills and you know meet other bands. The, the support of those local venues and and what they mean to those towns and to the to the grassroots music scene, like it, it's they are totally irreplaceable and you know obviously should be supported. I, I str quite strongly feel, as you can hear. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, you you've got so much going on. You've got a literary podcast for BBC Sounds as well. Turn up for the books. Um, briefly, what kind of guests have you got on, and what do you get out of doing that? That maybe influences when you next go back into the recording studio. Yeah, we've had some we've had some just really interesting guests from like Skin from Skunk and Nancy to Frank Cottrell Boyce. Just a, a, a huge, a huge range of, of 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 different people who you know work in and around the literary world, or or have, you know written books or memoirs. And for me, it was just such an amazing opportunity to have wonderful conversations. I co-hosted it with a guy called Simon Savage, who's a you know a real book enthusiast, and Irena Sinakojo, who's an amazing writer. And uh, just the opportunity to hang out with them, but also just to to nerd out on books and and talk about say. talk about libraries as well. It's, it's kind of library focused and it's also based around the BBC's uh, 100 books that help shape the world list. Well, we'll come back to talk about books, maybe bring you within to that too. That English degree really came in handy <laughs> in every sense. Yeah, I, I very much felt like like the uh, like the fan there though. Everyone else is very much in this literary world and I'm just there being like, I like reading, hello. <laughs> no, that's cute. Yeah. Uh, Dan Smith, Charlie Bond, thank you both so much. Bastille's beautiful album, Give Me the Future, is released on Friday. The band are on tour from March the 31st and Dan's podcast, Turn Up for the Books, is out now on BBC Sounds. I've got to ask you, because independent bookshops are a thing that on your tour list, aren't they, when you go around touring? Yeah, I guess it's, it's what, you know, we're, we're so lucky and privileged in, you know, pre-pandemic to have been able to travel a lot with our band and particularly Charlie and myself, like to go and explore uh, whatever town we're in and, and find whatever bookshop independent hopefully um, is there it's been a real it's been a real you know some of our kind of really fun memories from tour have been have been based around those because as you said like when what's amazing with in small independent bookshops is there there's a community there there's an atmosphere you know not that there isn't in in chain bookstores but you know it's 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 that it's that um yeah the sense of just being able to strike up a conversation with whoever works there i'm interested in what the recommendations are and and want to find things that i wouldn't usually find on the main tables at, at big book, bookstores. So you're all reading on tour as well, are you? Yeah, I try to, <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of downtime and we live on a little bus or sleeping in bunks next to each other. So there's a lot of space and time for reading. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, thank you all.